Guys, this is ridiculous. All right, so I just created an AI agent that interacts. Not only can I build 30 plus machine learning models in like 29 seconds, but I can now log the best ones using uh, this software called MLflow all with AI. So AI literally does everything for me now. Makes the machine learning model and I can take it into the production. I'm gonna teach you how today. So check this out. This is MLflow. If you've never heard of MLflow, what it is is it's a handy tool to help us basically log our projects, our machine learning projects. So this is a project in here. I've got an experiment, which is what I call a project, but it's called an experiment in MLflow terms. They have these things called runs and uh, they can log these models. And I have an H2O model in here. And the, and the handy thing is, is it uh, keeps track of everything for me. It has the, uh, you know, basically anything that everything that we need, like requirements, all that stuff to go into production. It can do predictions for me. It's amazing. So I'm going to show you how today the novel thing that I created is this AI that interfaces with MLflow and my H2O model. So I'm going to kind of combine um, some previous AI tips. Uh, so here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to expose you to my new AI data science team, number one. Number two, I'm going to introduce you to my AI ML agent. So I'm going to show you how to actually create the 32 models that I've just talked about. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, we're going to log the best one using MLflow for machine learning ops. And then I'm going to show you how to use the MLflow agent, my second agent, uh, to make predictions in production and to basically manage the entire machine learning project workflow. It's very cool um, and exciting. So first things first, let's take you over to the AI data science team. I'm just going to open that over here. So let's open my AI data science team. So this is how you get access to all of the agents that I'm building. So the machine learning agent or H2O ML agent, you're going to get that from this. You're going to get the uh, ML flow agent as well. So this is the thing that allows us to interface with ML flow. So let me walk you down through um, this real quick. And oh, and if you wouldn't mind links in the note, but please give this GitHub repo a star. That makes that's a big makes a big difference. Uh, we have already 975 stars approaching a thousand. And um, yeah, this is, it's an awesome repo. I'm putting a lot of effort into this to help make it easy for you to take agents off the shelf and perform common data science tasks. So um, the AI data science team, that's how you're gonna get access to these agents. The idea behind this repo is to give you an AI powered data science team that helps you perform common data science tasks 10X faster, or in some cases 100X faster because it's really sp sped me up. So, um, it's focused on a bunch of different common problems, problems that I've faced when working with clients, when working with companies, when working inside of companies um, as a data scientist. So these are common things and there's a ton of stuff. But the main thing I want to share with you today is we now have a machine learning ops agent. That's this guy right here. And I'm, we're going to work with the machine learning modeling agent. So I'm going to show you how to tie these two together and work with them together. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff coming, apps, uh, agents. So just check this thing out and kind of go through and do me a favor. Stop right now. Give it a GitHub star. That, mean, that means a lot. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we, we just checked off one, expose you to my new AI data science team. The next thing we got to do. So I got to show you how to actually use set up this code so you can use it effectively. All right, so um, if you haven't done so already, this code, everything that I share with you today, I'm gonna walk you through all of this stuff. We're gonna build the H2O clusters. We're gonna um, work with the, the MLflow tools agent um, and access the MLflow and, and do, and actually make some predictions with MLflow in production. So that's all cool stuff, but if you wanna access to this code, you need to join my AI Tips newsletter. Link is in the video notes. And that's going to get you access to the code that I'm working on today, which is a 011 MLOps MLflow H2O agent. Um, that's the, the code that I'm going to take you through. Uh, but it also gives you access to all of the other um, code files and data sets and everything that I've been doing as I've been growing my journey at, uh, with generative AI and combining that with data science. So it's really cool. Um, so definitely make sure uh, we're going to be working out of this file, join the newsletter, get the code, download it, and then you'll be off and uh, to the races. 
Okay, um, so let's let, we're gonna go through steps two through four now. Um, I've already shown you the GitHub repo. Uh, if you are ready, what you should do is run this line of code here: pip install uh, git, and it's kind of this like weird string, but um, you're gonna put this in your terminal, and that's gonna install the AI data science team. Uh, make sure you have H2O installed and MLflow installed as well. We need those um, to to be able to run this. Um, so the next thing we're gonna uh, we're gonna let me just clear out some of the stuff. We're gonna load the libraries. So these are the libraries that we need to load, and we're gonna load the data set. This is a churn data set. It comes out of this data folder over here. Um, we're gonna be working with the churn data.csv file. So you just grab that. Um, that's what we're pulling in over here. Uh, you're gonna set up an LLM. So let me run this, and I'll explain what's going on. So when we uh, run this code here, what's happening is we're going to set an API key, and this is going to go into our environment. It's going to be for OpenAI. That's the LLM that I'm using. I'm going to be using GPT-40 Mini for this training, okay? Um, and what that's going to do is this LLM is a generic LLM, but these agents kind of use that LLM as kind of the engine to do specialized things like machine learning or... Um, to do uh, the ML flow or ML ops uh, type of stuff. So uh, make sure you get an OpenAI API key. You just paste it in here. Um, I run this code over here. You don't need to run that, but you're gonna paste yours up here and then you don't need to run this line of code here. Um, I do that because I wanna keep my uh, OpenAI API key safe and uh, because it's, it's private. Um, okay, uh, next thing, we're going to create the machine learning agent. So the key thing here, um, if you followed along before, uh, we can log functions, we can log um, our ML, our machine learning models uh, in a directory, or what we can now do, and this is new, uh, we can enable ML flow, and you just set this parameter equal to true, so you give it your LLM, you give it uh, the access to, or tell it to use ML flow for logging, and um, it creates this ML agent, and it's going to go through these kind of steps and uh, produce the uh, machine learning model. Now, this machine learning model that's going to be stored in this uh, these things called ML runs because uh, I've enabled ML flow. It's going to use that. So here's how we do it. This is going to create the um, the the 30 uh, machine learning models. So let's run this. Shift and enter. And right now, what it's doing is it's actually going through kind of these steps up here. So you can see we're recommending the machine learning steps. You see that right here. That uh, is, is this right here, okay? Now it's creating the H2O ML code. So it's actually generating H2O code, which is going to create, you know, the 30 plus machine learning models. And I'll, and I'll show you how to get those. Oh, we got a, got a little issue. If you run into an error, um, just, just give it a, uh, All right, we're done. And uh, it has just run and created all these models for me. I got uh, like 35 different models in here. Um, this is the best one. So this is the one that it's gonna be logging inside of ML Flow. So, um, all right, so, so the next thing is uh, we ran the agent, uh, and I just ran this ML Git leaderboard. That's the thing that shows me all the models that were just created. So we'll put that in there for you. You guys can test that out. Um, I did go back and I switched back to GPT-40 Mini because we don't need that uh, 4.0 I had to use because just because the function wasn't wasn't working quite that well. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Um, so next thing I'm gonna do here is we're going to create this ML flow agent, all right? So when we do that, uh, what it does is it, it gives us access to a bunch of different tools. And this is, is a different type of agent where it actually does tool calling. So let's find out what it, what tools it has access to. So it's saying here I've got ML experiment management. I can search lists and, ex and experiments. So the experiments are these things over here. Um, it'll be like these are our experiments will be listed over here. Uh, it can do uh, ML flow run management. So these are runs over here. Um, so if you can see here, let me refresh this. I now have a new run right here, this uh, luxuriant uh, base 89. 
if I click on that and go to artifacts, it's got the ML flow model in here and it's got the leaderboard as well. So that's the leaderboard that I just showed you. So um, it's got all the different artifacts that we need to be able to run this best model that we just created. Okay. Um, so it's got access to like all this stuff. So um, some of the things you can do, uh, we can launch ML flow, uh, the UI if we want. And now it's running at uh, localhost 5002. So if I click over here, it's running. Okay. Um, next, what we can do is, uh, and I'm going to close this just to give us a little bit more space here. Uh, we can see what runs are available. So let's run this shift and enter. Now it's, you can see which tools it's using. It's using the search experiments and search runs tools. And it just kind of knows what to do. Um, and these are the runs that are available. And if we want, uh, what we can do is get the artifacts. And th that's basically this table over here. Um, these are the runs that are available. So let's say I want to grab this run here, or if I want to grab, uh, this is actually the previous run that I, that I ran. Um, we can actually ask it to, do, to make the churn predictions now. And this is where we get into um, production. Okay, so we can actually say, okay, uh, of these models that, that we've just saved, I want to take this run ID here and I want to make predictions. So you just pop that right in here. Uh, I'm going to keep this as the previous one that I ran, but you'll change this to whatever runs you've got. And then um, if I run this code here, whoops, if I run this code here, uh, what it's doing is firing up an H2O cluster and it's going to make the predictions for me. There we go. And I got predictions. So all I did uh, differently, the only thing I did differently is I provide the data frame now. And what that does is it gives us the data that we want to want to predict. So we're doing this this churn data set here that we made the machine learning model on. Now we want to make the prediction, and uh, and that's what it's returning here: predictions on the seven thousand forty three rows, um, which is what this is. Okay. Next, what we can do uh, we can shut down the MLflow UI. Uh, well, we'll see if this this works. Um, I think there might be a oh there it goes yeah. Uh, so there's a bug I have to fix in this uh, in this function. All right, well, there, there you have it, guys. This is a really cool example of how we can use and combine AI with machine learning and use natural language to tell it what we want it to do, like make uh, machine learning models or uh, log those models in MLflow or fire up MLflow and what, or what examples or what experiments do I have, what runs do I have. Uh, take this run, make predictions with that. And we can start to, to just really speed up everything that we're doing. So next steps, um, my idea is eventually I want to include these in some apps to make it a little bit more user friendly so we don't have to run code, but we can just kind of like type into um, a Streamlit app. Um, and then I've got, I've got more agents coming. So if you have any agents that you want that help you do data science tasks and I haven't already made them, feel free to, to request away. Um, the next thing is uh, if you want to go further with me than what we're doing here, uh, I do have a generative AI bootcamp um, that is a paid program that uh, I'm getting ready to start um, the next cohort of. So if you want into that, I'm going to put a link in the video notes. Uh, make sure to sign up for it um, or uh, attend the free. Uh, I do have free workshops also uh, where I give you kind of like sneak peeks and show you how to do different techniques that are inside of that, that boot, uh, the boot camp. But the boot camp is an eight week program that really takes you from zero to hero. And uh, you can see the, the curriculum here, uh, every topic that's covered. So uh, a lot of stuff coming. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. This is a, a really cool and uh, unique use case. And I think can help out data scientists do their jobs 10x faster, maybe even 100x faster uh, once I start to scale some of this stuff up. All right. I will see you soon. Uh, until next time.